particularly upset, particularly upset by the handling, by of, the this handling mass of this mass matter, matter, matter by the matter, incredible, by the terrible, terrible mass terrible media. media. Did he perform sexual acts on you? Did he force you to perform sexual acts on him? What was the nature of the abuse? Yes, exactly what you said. He performed sexual acts on me and forced me to perform sexual acts on him. At every opportunity, At every opportunity the media has the dissected, media has and, dissected manipulated and manipulated these allegations, these allegations to reach their own conclusions. Their own conclusions. Why, did you, why did you deny it? Mm. Because that felt like a great opportunity to say, well, yeah, some of the same things have happened to me. I, I, didn't, I, I did not testify out of thinking I was doing something good or knowing yeah. that, that, that what he did was bad. I was afraid of being caught. I ask all of you to wait and hear the truth before you label or condemn me. Don't treat me like a criminal, because I am innocent. Um, you know, oral sex, full penetration, uh, anal stuff. It seemed like he liked it, that Michael liked it, so I wanted to like it. You can hear, like, the infatuation and... and how much I was attracted to him, and then also his, like, really, his attraction to you, sort of like, making you feel special. I know that you're afraid. That you're afraid. You're afraid of us. Afraid of us. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. The Neverland boy rumors, the surgery stuff, the being in his business, calling him a weirdo, and he couldn't do anything. He was a man that was full of joy, but he gave the joy to the world. Michael Jackson, from the time he was that big, yeah. did nothing but perform. Right. No life, no kid life, no nothing. Well, so to him, hurting a child, he'd rather hurt an adult if he was gonna hurt somebody. He would never hurt a child. This is the last person in the world because to him, they were the only people that understood him. Keep in mind that until a trial and until somebody has evidence, you know, the nature of the evidence is what matters, not the seriousness of the allegations. Until somebody has some, you shouldn't believe a darn thing because you don't know. Don't know. Uh, when you have somebody who's recognized as, as quite possibly the single most famous person in the world, and clearly the most recognizable person in, in, the, in the history of, of modern times, modern times, modern times. He's been treated by the dirty. But Michael was much more than a man of song and dance. Michael was a heart that beat for the love of humanity. Wade Robson was my first witness in Michael Jackson's criminal trial. And I had to think long and hard about whether we even needed to put on a defense case because the cross-examination of prosecution witnesses went very well. But I decided to put on a case. And when you do that, you want to start strong and you want to end strong. I started with one of my strongest witnesses for Michael Jackson, Wade Robson. He was adamant that he had never been touched, never been molested, never been abused, directly or indirectly. I called his mother and sister as witnesses to corroborate what he said, because they traveled on these tours too. You know, I've slept in the same bed as Michael. It's just you watch cartoons, you fall asleep. You know, it's just a friendship, and I know he would never do anything to hurt my brother. He's just, he's the nicest guy you've ever met. I've been there when uh, the, these kids have been in Michael's room. I've been there with them. It's just party time. They watch videos, they eat junk food, they play video games. Yeah. There's nothing more to it than that. 
And to have him suddenly reverse course so radically, years after Michael Jackson has passed away and can't speak up for himself, is outrageous. But Seems Wade Robson did swear under oath. Ray, Wade Robson, I put him on as my witness, right. and he was subjected to a withering cross-examination by Prosecutor Ron Zonin from the Santa Barbara District Attorney's Office. I mean, Ron went after him, and Ron's a good prosecutor. He would not waver. He was adamant he was never touched. So to suddenly come back years later and say we want millions of dollars, we were brainwashed, we had repressed memories, we didn't face the facts, we didn't deal with reality, I just find very, very suspicious. Jackson family points out to us that your story's changed after Michael's death, is what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, they also believe that if he were still alive, you all would not be sitting here talking to us right now. Mm -hmm. There would be no movie, there would be no documentary, you would not be talking. Mm -hmm. What do you say to them? And he can't defend himself, of course, because he's no longer here. Right. Um, this, this isn't the f other kids have come forward when he was alive. Meanwhile, CBS obtained a secretly taped phone conversation allegedly between the father of the boy who accused Jackson of sexual abuse and the boy's stepfather. Listen to this. This man is going to be humiliated beyond belief. He will not believe it. He will not believe what's going to happen. Beyond, beyond his worst nightmares, sell one more record. If I go through with this, I win big time. I will get everything I want. They will be destroyed forever. Jackson's private investigator says the tapes prove that Jackson is telling the truth about his accusers just wanting money. The, the, them accusing him of just the most horrible things. This kid's father has committed suicide because he, he just couldn't take it. And now the kid has come forth and said, Michael never touched him. That's right. <laughs> father of a boy who back in the early 1990s in a highly publicized case you probably remember accused Michael Jackson of molesting him. Well that father committed suicide in Jersey City. Peter Thorne is there now live now with the latest on the investigation. Peter? Jim, just months after Michael Jackson's sudden demise, as you mentioned, another shocking death. And this time, as you said, it is somebody who is closely linked to an infamous accusation against the king of pop. The gruesome scene unfolded behind locked doors at this luxury waterfront high-rise here on Hudson Street in Jersey City. Multiple sources reporting former Beverly Hills dentist turned aspiring screenwriter Evan Chandler was found dead here inside his Jersey City home. Chandler is the father of the boy who once accused Michael Jackson of molestation. Other kids have come forward when he was alive. 12-year-old Gavin and his brother and sister. Gavin met Jackson two years ago after he'd been told he was dying of cancer. Great, great. Uh -huh. Not sick at all. No more cancer. Oh, all gone. Can I have my parents yeah, nice. to plan for his funeral? Because there was no chance. They, t they told your parents they to, told plan, for to his plan for his funeral. Plan they for told the funeral. he wasn't going to grow. He wasn't going to be able to have kids. I had a he, was, he had growth spurts during chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. I went from 4 foot 10 to 5 foot 4. Medicine don't know it all, do they? My children and me know what rejection is. To be neglected, to be spit on, to be talked about, to be made an outsider. Only because of our status in life, of what we were going through, and Michael did not have that. He said, come to him, not just Gavin, but Star and Davelin and me, and called us his family. And Gavin was the one that asked him, could I call you daddy? And Michael said, of course. And so through him, it sparked Star and, Gav and Davelin calling him daddy Michael very innocent and beautiful relationship which everyone has spun it out of control he's a very loving caring humble man he took us under his wing when nobody else would um he didn't turn us away like um, all the people were doing and he gave my brother the extra little spark he needed in his mind because my brother was to the point where he couldn't even move he couldn't even talk and he gave my little brother so much and the Arvizo family suddenly have decided that Michael had molested Gavin 
Gavin came to Michael and said, Michael, could we sleep in your room tonight? And Michael, Michael looked at me and says, I don't know, you, you know, I think you better ask your mother. Oh, we already asked our mother. She says, sure, no problem. I'm like, no, this is so something's odd. This is not right. And then as I was about to go tell Gavin that he cannot sleep in Michael's room, Michael says, okay, I have a solution for this. You have to sleep in the room with me. The two children slept on the bed and Michael and I slept on the floor. Very interesting, Robin, in all of these pages, hundreds of pages, many, many hours of investigation, going to the Philippines, going to Chicago, going all over the country. There's not one scrap of evidence that Michael Jackson ever harmed a child, did anything wrong, committed any crime. It's almost a vindication when you look at this. The FBI looked at all of these matters and said, there's nothing here. Other kids have come forward when he was alive. If you're saying that there's a lot of predators in this industry. It's a many feathered bird. If you said that there was one gentleman in the industry who did not take advantage of you. He was not a pedophile. That's you said right. it was Michael Jackson. All people. Other kids have come forward when he was alive. You know, I mean, he was a god to people. And to me, he was, you know, I knew he was a pop singer. But beyond that, you know, I didn't, I wasn't one of the fans. I think that's one of the reasons why we connected. You know, they go, oh, you slept in the same bedroom as him. And it's like, I don't think you understand. Michael Jackson's bedroom is two stories. <laughs> and it has like like three bathrooms and this and that so when I slept in his bedroom yeah but you have to understand the whole scenario and the thing is with Michael is that he's not very good at explaining himself and he never really has been because he's not a very social person I mean he's you're talking about someone who's been sheltered and sheltering himself also for the last like 30 years or you know and so he's not very good at communicating to people and not very good at conveying what he's actually trying to say to you and so when he says something like that you know people you know he doesn't quite understand why people react the way that they do why do you think he likes young people so it's because it, it's the same reason why he liked me was the fact that I didn't care who he was that was the thing I talked to him like he was a normal human being and that's what and, and kids do that to him because he's not I mean he's Michael Jackson the pop singer but he's not the god of you know the king of pop or anything like that he's just you know a guy who's actually very kid like himself and wants to go out there and wants to play video games with you 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 video games But they're saying you two in particular would not be coming out because your stories have changed, you defended him, and now you, you're, you're telling a different story. And that right. if you were alive, you would not be doing that. My belief is that we'd still be doing this. Of course, some details may be different. Some details may be different. How are you doing, Wade? Hey, why did you wait so long to come out about the story? You guys are here for me. No more comment. Where are you, you going to talk about it? You say you can't talk to me about it now? Is it true that you're moving to Hawaii? So you have nothing to say like to fans who say that you're just doing this for money? I don't want to watch that Michael Jackson thing. We, we don't have any hard oh. evidence that he was molesting kids, right? All we have is rumors. Well, here's the and thing. In court, he was a, he was acquitted. It just makes me sad. It makes me so sad. But here's it's the also thing. there's like a there's a there's a lesson to be learned there in so many different ways. But one of the big lessons to be learned is that you never want to be that famous. That that was my takeaway. I, I, I was watching my girl. I go, can you imagine being that famous? And she goes, yeah, it's probably awesome. Like, no, hold on. You know how we like to go to the mall? We like to go out to eat. That's gone. You can't do that anymore. Yeah, that's you, all gone. That's all gone. People would, would, would start a riot. They'll take, they'll take that away from you. Yeah. Your normal life is not... Over. You, you just stay in your house. Oof, but he, Yeah, he, that's why he developed an amusement park. Like, he made his house a fucking amusement park. What do you they, say? Uh, they, had, they set this up for him to go grocery shopping. Wow. They had a fake... They emptied a grocery store and paid people to be uh, shoppers so he could have the experience of what it's like to be normal what? going through like a, a Ralph's or whatever. Yeah. You, there's no stars like Michael Jackson now. You can't. Right. You can't do it in current society. Hmm. The dudes in the documentary, the two are oh, like, oh, oh, we got molested. The one was the number one key witness who's saying he didn't get molested. 
Okay, well and then now, he shouldn't be able to say anything. And both of them were witnesses. Because that means they should go to like, jail. And now they're like, well, no, that's not true. We were young, bitch. You were 20. How old was he? He was in 20 his 20s? Something. Yeah. Well, also, like, isn't that perjury? It means he lied in court? Be fucked. You can't lie in court either way, one way or the other. You can't lie to protect somebody, and you can't lie to accuse someone either. You can't lie. I don't know what the deal is with that. I mean, that seems like that's something they could drag him to court for. And the Jackson came out and went, well, isn't it convenient you guys are coming out now when you're in financial trouble? Ah, uh, of course. Well, by the way, those two have been clout chasing, have been clickbait for a long time Before when it comes nine? to Michael Jackson. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of hard to believe those two, especially Wade Robson. Right, it's and very that's what a lot of people are him. saying at this point. He's very shifty, and uh, I just it's tough to believe him. Exactly. Said this was a I don't believe person. a word of anything in this documentary. Okay, 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 okay Wendy. You, you met him, didn't you, when you were 14? Yeah, I spent a lot of time with him over a 10-year period, um, and I first met him at 14. And so what, what, were you, what was he like? Well, he was um, extremely humble, very sweet, very funny, very, very sincere, and just had a, a, a very, very gentle, kind energy about him. Um, I spent a lot of time at Neverland. He invited me to Neverland. When you hear these ridiculous claims that Neverland was supposed to be some kind of place to lure people in, it's just outrageous. I've seen it for myself. And, you know, the second time I went, you know, I actually, um, I really broke down and cried because I saw all the beautiful things he was doing for, you know, underprivileged people, mm. children, folks of all ages. And it just really broke my heart that, you know, we live in a world where someone who has nothing but kindness and goodwill to offer can be so deliberately misinterpreted and made out to be a monster. And I thought, you know, the, this will never get exposed. Can you understand why people might see it as a strange thing to do as a grown man to invite sort of younger children to uh, children to, to come over and, and stay? Well, he didn't invite anyone ever into his bedroom. He never made invitations That's to people stay in his... what's said in the document. It's not contrary to what Michael Jackson's claimed. And the documentary is one-sided, it's emotionally manipulative. To be like children, mm -hmm. to love children, to be as pure as children are, mm -hmm. and to make yourselves as innocent and see the world through eyes of, of wonderment and, and the whole magical quality of it all. And I love exactly. that. And there are, built inside the walls here, beds. <laughs> beds for some of those sick children who come and what I realized when I saw that is that you have to be a person who really cares about children to build it into your architecture yes yes we have children that come who are um, intravenously they're, they're very sick and they're bedridden and they have can't to, sit up right they can't sit up and these beds they're hospital beds mm -hmm. you push a button they move up and they move down and they're able to watch we have a magic show we show the current films if it's cartoons anything mm -hmm. you know and anything so they can escape to that world of magic that they don't get a chance to experience, experience. experience. with michael i i it was a, a genuine naivety uh, and innocence about Michael, which it's very hard to uh, explain. But did you ever talk to him about that and say, look, this, this kind of naivety and wanting to be around children, you know, never, never land, which is like never growing up. Because did you ever say to him no, this, how be, easily this could be misconstrued no, because he, when you were he, grown? No, he, he didn't get that. He just didn't understand what you know, in today's society, it is not really acceptable to behave in the manner that he did, having but As his friend, would you not try and make him see that? <sighs> it's very funny because when you're, when I was in his presence, you get all that kind of, all that stuff fell away. It was like, it was irrelevant because he was, he was an ethereal being, he was such an innocent man. Wade Robson, you know, there's a timeline. Wade Robson, first of all, starts, He's doing tributes, he's doing all this stuff once my uncle passed, basically. He goes to the memorial, he dances with Janet for the VMAs. He calls So You Think You Can Dance 24 hours after, within 24 hours of, of my uncle passing, pitching a tribute show, you know. This is stuff that's not out there, but Wade was up for the Circle A job, you know, um, as director, lead choreographer. It was up to the estate to approve him, and they didn't approve him. And so he ended up starting to write a book, a tell-all book about being sexually abused that he hid from everyone, but that he started trying to get a publisher for and tried to, to get um, paid for. And when no publisher would pick it up, that's all of a sudden when 
he comes out publicly with this abuse claim. But Wade and James are not making any money off this documentary. Well, that's one of the biggest lies because they have an appeal right now in court for uh, hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars against the estate. So they say they're not making any money, but if this works to their advantage, they have a very good possibility of bringing up that appeal case. And, and, you, and you believe that both Wade and James, because you, you've said that Wade has this history and, and you've picked holes in his story, but why James? What, what does James want from this? Well, they both, they're both have the same lawyer, mm -hmm. first of all. James discovered that he was abused after seeing Wade on um, Matt Lauer. So, and then he hired the same lawyer. So for me, it's a piggyback th situation. The reason I've attacked Wade more is because I know Wade. You know, I don't feel comfortable attacking someone that I don't know. He dated your cousin, was it? He dated my cousin for over seven years. And, and it's really interesting because they left that out of the story. And he dated her during the time period that supposedly he's getting molested by my Uncle Michael. Which, is, I th which I think is ridiculous, especially since my Uncle Michael was the one that, hooked, that basically brought them together. And so it throws off the whole narrative you know, of Michael Jackson wanting him only for him, or Michael Jackson want, taught him to hate women. Well, he introduced him to Brandy. He basically set them up. How did you feel when you heard uh, that a boy was alleging that uh, Michael had abused him? I was shocked too, and I think it's sick, because I know Michael well enough that he wouldn't do anything like that. I know that for a fact. And he asked the whole family to come back to the ranch, his place, that night, Neverland, and uh, we ended up staying there for like a week. Um, <laughs> that must be every kid's dream. I mean, my dream would have been to go there too. Yeah, I mean, you show, it's Disneyland. You know, his house, your show, it was just the best thing in the world. One of the things I noticed about you, and, I, and this goes back to why I said you were a stand-up guy, um, we covered the trial, and you were one of the few people to stick up for him. Mm -hmm. And why do you think that was? And why was it important for you to stick up for him? Because he's always been a friend of me. That's what you do for friends, you tell the truth. You know? What are you doing now besides raising your child that you now have? <laughs> yeah, things have changed since then, raising a boy. Um, but uh, I'm starting on uh, Cirque du Soleil, Michael Jackson show. Um, so it's you know the equivalent of uh, the Beatles love show that they have, or the Elvis show, but for Michael. Um, which is... Uh, you know, exciting and terrifying all at the same time because it's such a huge uh, responsibility. Uh, but that was why I took it on. You know, Michael was such a huge part of my career and life. We were friends for 20 years before he passed, since I was seven. Um, so it's an opportunity for me to give back a little bit to, to, to his legacy. It's such a big part of his legacy and to, to make sure as much as I can that it's done right and that it really represents uh, his essence. And Mr. Robson has adamantly denied under oath and in numerous interviews over the past 20 years that Michael Jackson ever did anything inappropriate to him. Now he wants us to believe that he committed perjury at least twice and has been lying to anyone and everyone about Mr. Jackson since the early 1990s so he can file a claim for money. Mr. Robson's transparent lawsuit comes nearly four years after Michael passed. His claim is outrageous and sad. Germ Jermaine Jackson, Michael's brother, said Wade Robson is full of, and then used an expletive. Mm -hmm. What's your response? I understand completely how hard it is to understand this. Um, that being said, if you're going to be accused, you're going to say you, you defended Michael Jackson while he was alive because he was good for your career. Mm -hmm. And now that he's gone, there's an opportunity here to sue his estate. He can't defend himself and get money. Why didn't you go to the lawyers and do this quietly? And try to, to settle some, right. make some kind of a deal? Right. I understand how confusing it is to understand, you know, how hard it is to understand. I get that. But um, all it takes is a little bit of education into child sexual abuse and realizing how unfortunately typical my scenario is the trauma and the psychological effects of child sexual abuse last for so long you know i had no understanding of this until up to just over a year ago and i'm just at the beginning of my healing process i'm sure i'll be dealing with this for the rest of my life in my life
life, I have only tried to help thousands upon thousands of children to live happy lives. It brings tears to my eyes when I see any child who suffers. I am not guilty of these allegations, but if I am guilty of anything, it is of giving all that I have to give to help children all over the world. It is of loving children of all ages and races. It is of gaining sheer joy from seeing children with their innocent and smiling faces. It is of enjoying through them the childhood that I missed myself. If I am guilty of anything, it is of believing what God said about children. Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of heaven. In no way do I think that I am God, but I do try to be God-like in my heart. I am totally innocent of any wrongdoing, and I know these terrible allegations will all be proven false. Again, to my friends and fans, thank you very much for all of your support. Together, we will see this through to the very end. I love you very much, and may God bless you all. I love you. Goodbye.